Bala Sarasuti is regarded worldwide as the great exponent of Bharatanatyam and as one of the most remarkable performing artists of the 20th century. She was born into one of the last surviving matrilineal professional families of musicians and dancers in southern India, a family regarded by many as unparalleled in the known history of the arts of the South. In the 18th and 19th centuries, her ancestors were famed performers at the courts of Tanjabur and Travancore. I was 14 and this was in 1934 and Bala was 18 I think at that time. Actually I had met Bala even earlier in 1932 when we went to Madras for the first time. And this was at the house where Vinadhanam her grandmother lived. So we all went and visited her. In fact, we met her a number of times, the old lady, grand lady. She was almost blind at that time. But one particular evening, I remember, we all went. It was a very old house, small. We went up and we all sat down, my brother, myself and the whole group. And Vinadhanam played the Veena. And what she played, I still remember, it was the Raga Pantu Varali, which is very much like our Puriya Dhanashri of North. And I, I remember clearly, within just not even one minute, I, while listening to her, I had tears in my eyes, which proves to say that she had something very special uh, apart from the technique of playing the veena, but her feeling, there was so much of soul and so much of emotion in her playing that she could bring tears to people's eyes. And that is the speciality of Vinadhanam school. And that's what Bala herself inherited. Bala Saraswati's grandmother, Veena Dhanamard, was widely regarded as one of the most influential musicians of her generation. She had a repertoire of over 1,000 compositions, representing a direct lineage to all three of Carnatic Music's trinity, as well as a number of other composers. Bala Saraswati's mother, Jayamar, inherited a repertoire of extraordinary character, volume, and majesty, including the repertoire of the famed Tanjavur Nattuanar family. It was the combination of Bala Saraswati and Jayamar in performance that revived the standard of music for dance that existed as a vague memory in the early 20th century. Bala acknowledged her mother Jayamar as the one who made the greatest difference. It was Jayamar who decided to have her daughter trained as a dancer, both in the face of family opposition and the prevalent social stigma who selected Kandapa as her guru and who taught her not music alone but also how to translate melody into movement. Bala Saraswati's first inspiration to dance was Mailapur Gauri Amar. Jayamar and her sister Lakshmi Ratnamar were musicians in Gauri Amar's ensemble and the Natunar was Kanchipuram Tandapa Pillai. Mailapur Gauri Amar was a famous dancer from the professional community dedicated to the Kapalishwara temple in Mailapur in Madras. During Gauri Amar's frequent visits to Dhanamar's house, Bala would imitate Gauri Amar's dancing. After her concerts, 
Bala would help Gauri Amal remove her belts, slip them over her small ankles, and begin to dance herself. Bala remarked, "My initial inspiration to take up dance came from watching Gauri Amal's performances when I was very young. If she had not brought the dance to such a stage of development, the combination of music and dance that I attempted to realize would not have been possible." If anyone should be credited with the survival rather than the revival of Bharatanatyam, it is Gauri Ammal. Born in 1899, Kandapa Pillai belonged to a reputed family of over six generations of Nattavanars and was the inheritor of a great tradition therein. He was a direct descendant of the Thanjavur Quartet, a name given collectively to four brothers who, in the 18th century, played a pivotal role in the codification and structuring of the Bharatanatyam repertoire we know today. Jayamal chose him to be Bala's teacher and she began lessons at the age of four. An observer in his class remarked, Kandapa would give his students one or two adavas for every class. He would go on and on till he heard the three separate sounds from the toes, heel and the flat which are not the same. Once perfected, these had to be put together with the line of the body, the bends and the feet of course. Bala remarked, Kandapa was my first and only guru. He conveyed to me the legacy of the Tanjavur quartet and brought his own unique sense of balance in standardizing the repertoire and recital structure as we know today. He taught me how to face the fame I might achieve and the criticism I might receive. He used to whisk me away after every recital for he was worried praise may go to my head. He would immediately review every performance critically, suggesting improvements and corrections. Bala recalled her debut. I danced every day as if in performance, so I did not think of it as an unusual event. When I heard the music and the symbols of my teacher, I felt a thrill. All I wanted to do was dance and I danced as one inspired. Daily I have to get up 6 o'clock and then I am going to I start my music till 11.30, 9.30. Then I go to my guru's house. I dance 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 12.30 like that. Then I come back and I will take rest a little while. And then some reading. I will read some books and then after four o'clock, he will come again, and again my routine work will start. The relentless training added to an inborn musical talent bore fruit. While still in her early teens, Bala caught the eye of connoisseurs. When she was young, I have been uh, watching her from her young days. In those days, her dance was marvelous. And her teacher, Kandapa, was himself a genius, and he had a gift for pruning and uh, removing all crudities and unnecessary repetitions and all, and, uh, all that she has uh, been doing in a wonderful way in the younger days. Later, of course, she has been concentrating more on the Abhiraya portion. But it, those who have seen her in the younger days can still recall how beautiful her dances themselves. In the style of Kandapa, there were almost like 100 basic steps. The first two years at least, went on only with their feet training. So by the time the hand delineation is attached to the adavas or the basic steps, the dancer, the student is thorough with the feet and everything assembles in a very mechanical way without any hitch. The exploration of five jatis in Kandapa style is something very unique and fulfilling because whether it is Pallavi in Jatiswaram or the Purva Dhamma Pravarnam or the Pallavi of the Tillana, all of them had the, the vinyasa of the five jatis into Korvais and the Tirmanam Siddhivarnam and with the corresponding tattometers with the appropriate calculations. All of these are starting not exactly on the summer as it is done these days. Every edip or the starting point is different. And how beautifully the Natvangam exponent conducts the dancer to arrive at a beautiful synthesis with the percussion and all the while the singing going on. 
which is hardly seen these days because it's a very difficult practice. Everyone has to be an expert and the dancer has the biggest challenge of uh, dancing to all the experts. The first half of the 1930s saw Bala Saraswati in her element. In 1933, she performed for the first time under the aegis of the Music Academy. So captivated by her dance was Uday Shankar, one of the pioneers of modern Indian dance, that he arranged to have Bala brought to Calcutta the very next year to perform at the All Bengal Music Conference. In the audience were Satyajit Ray, young Ali Akbar Khan and his father Allahuddin Khan, Shambhu Maharaj and Birju Maharaj and young Ravi Shankar, who recalled what a thrilling sight it was to have Bala perform in the presence of the great Rabindranath Tagore as he sat at a corner of the stage watching her dance. I remember Bala's first performance in Calcutta when Kandapan Pillai, her guru, himself sat there as in Natuvangam and uh, he had with him mother and the aunt Jemma and I forget her aunt's name. She was also there. They both sang. And it was something out of this world. And it was a special event, you know how? Because Rabindranath Tagore, the great poet, he was sitting on the stage at one corner on a very special chair that was. And with his personality sitting there, I remember that Bala was so excited because having him sitting on the and immediately she became like a star you know because that was the first time people saw pure Bharatanatyam during that period of a couple of weeks that she was in Calcutta we became such good friends because somehow we were you know both young and we used to just play and run about and you know I saw that side of Bala which I think very few people have seen and since then our friendship remained always you know very very strong I thought she was super her movement was such flowing movement not like any other uh, Bharatanatyam dancers I have seen she was really wonderful Bala acknowledges that it was Uda Shankar who spread the word and paved the way for her career. Soon, Bala was giving recitals in all the major cities of India. Amongst the earliest reviewers of Bala's performances were Khalki Krishnamurti, K. Chandrasekharan, and Ra Ganapati, whose incisive writings gave significant insights into her artistry. Fortunately for me, on that occasion, Veena Dharamal also was present. As she saw the program, the last item was a shloka to be rendered. She called the secretary and told him to remove that shloka. What does that slip of a girl know about the meaning of a great shloka in Sanskrit? No. I am just mentioning it to show how Dhanamar had such a standard of uh, rendering music as well as dance. Again she came back in 1949 to the stage. People were feeling her, the loss of her presence from the arena of dancers very keenly and I was one of those who went to the museum theater where it was announced that she is going to be starting a dance with her mother Jayamar to sing for her. Oh, it was such a beautiful dance that day. Traditions were responsible for that uniqueness of dance. Many others, however much they may be in the forefront in Bharatanatya, they can never reach the same level of enjoyment given to the Rishikas as she did in her days. She was a person of very deep and uh, very deep dimensions. In India, you know, our arts, it is uh, 
it is rooted deeply in spirituality you see and bala was a highly spiritual person and her dance it was only a form of worship huh? it was her it was the mode of uh, her spirit's communion with the one great spirit she was my neighbor for two years and you know, those two years she used to come to my house very often and on the one hand we were having this very lofty and deep things of the spirit on the other hand i could also see a whole human she was how intensely the wind bala was she was capable of uh, very deep love very deep friendship and she was also a very keen observer of men and matters of course outsiders they will think that bala was critical of everything that was not up to the highest standards it was not particular like being critical you see she was cut out that way yes she could not stand the anything spurious anything of uh, second rate uh, order that was why she kept her heart of all from all these things and i will tell you only one instance which which is very deeply etched in my memory how greatly she valued her art see artists they come they commit so many mistakes in the performance of the dance in the steps and other things they don't very much bother about it only once in a, a small fraction of a of a second bala missed a step you see and uh, she felt that it was a great sacrilege she has done an apachar to god and she did not disclose it to anybody but she immediately took me to chidambaram that place where nataraja is the prime dancer you see she went there to ask for pardon of the lord for having earned this the dance which is a mode of worship you can see what an artist she was it meant so much for people who were cut spiritually to see her dance usually i am very continuous about my evening meditations i won't give it up on any score but bala's dance i made an exception among the many visitors to her family home was a musician called hayagriva chari from dharwar in the indian state of karnataka it was he who taught the family vyasaraya's composition krishnani begane around 1934 When Jaimal sang the song during one of Bala's recitals in Madras, Bala had a sudden inspiration to dance impromptu. In the following years, she gave it considerable polish and it became a trademark item of her repertoire. बनावट नहीं था जो भी था जो भी आंखों में था वो सामने था कृष्णानी बेगनी वारो उनका एक खास भाव कि कृष्ण को कैसे वो संकेत करके बुला रही कि कृष्णानी बेगनी वारो तो वो आंखों में वही बात कि कृष्णानी बेगनी वारो वो प्यार वो वात्सल्य उनके भाव में हमें दिखा बाकी वैसे तो नाचते तो बहुत से लोग हैं लेकिन वही कहने की बात है कि रामायण तो एक है लेकिन पढ़ने वाला और समझाने वाला जितना समझदार होता है जितना ज्ञानी होता है उतना ही उसको प्रिय बनाता है तो उनकी आंखों में इतना सुंदर चित्र खिंचता था कि जैसे कृष्ण यहाँ पर खड़े हैं कि जैसे कि कृष्णा ने देग ने बारो ये चित्र उनकी आंखों में ऐसा झलकता था इतने प्यार से कृष्ण को बुलाती थी उनके साथ खेलती थी या चोटी पकड़ना हाथ छुड़ाना इत्यादि आज भी मुझे उनकी याद आती है
Towards the end of the 1930s, Bala's health took a downward spiral. A rheumatic fever in her childhood had left her with a damaged heart. An undiagnosed and untreated thyroid imbalance caused an unmanageable weight gain. This period brought losses with profound artistic consequences for Bala. Veena Dhanamal passed away in 1938. Kandappa accepted Uday Shankar's invitation to teach at his art center at Almora in North India. A move brought on by the effects of Bala's ill health as well as wages offered by Uday Shankar that Bala could not possibly match. Kandapa's move to Almora in 1938 and premature death in 1941 left her stranded without a natvanar to conduct her recitals and Bala was restricted to all abhinaya concerts when Vedantam Lakshmi Narayana Shastri came to Madras in 1948 he arrived at Bala's doorstep offering to teach her Bala's daughter Lakshmi recalled his astounding physical control he could sweat on command weep at will make his hair stand out and change the color of his skin bala said his true genius lay in his enormous variety of improvisational techniques in my 30s shastri opened new vistas for me especially in varnam improvisation in a very real sense he gave me the confidence to attempt those things i do today during this period the anti notch movement gained considerable momentum and ended with the devadasi act of 1947 which made it illegal for women to be dedicated to hindu temples or any other place of worship gave legal sanction to devadasis to contract marriage and prescribed a minimum punishment of 5 years imprisonment for those found guilty of aiding and abetting the devadasi system with one stroke it cut off the strong nexus between the temples and a community of artists dedicated to music and dance thus closing down a historic granary of the arts in south india particularly in the tanjavur district in the following years the unique milieu in which the arts and artists had thrived for centuries vanished for all practical purposes for bala it led to a loss of audience opportunities and income physical afflictions aside she had lost her guru and went through a phase of depression and very nearly gave up dancing i think that the devadasis and the dharma family and dharma family are just are are examples of the grandeur of aesthetics that existed in the world of the devadasis and the esevarlalas and if you use them as what you could call samplings um you really wonder what have we lost and uh, what has society done to devadasis i mean of course we can go through anthropological theses and you know, sociological analysis but as people of the world of the art world of bharatanatyam world of sadir and the world of carnatic music i think we need to think about this and the truth of the matter is this here were these wonderful people who lived in within drowned in the world of a certain aesthetic form for generations and for decades and decades and the women of those communities were abused were put to shame by the men of privilege people like us and what happened after that the end result like with any patriarchal society across the globe is that the people who got affected by the way to correct the system were again the women so these wonderful artists were abused and these wonderful artists were then thrown away but all of us went ahead scot free not only did we go scot free we also took the art from them uh and used that even now as an excuse to say look we learned from them no that's that's i mean that that's so wrong to place that in that way we appropriated wonderful art from these people and these families made it our own and made them disappear from the memory of what carnatic music is and i think it's time that we reflect about it and not reflect about it just in terms of the past because these are things that happen always in society they're not going to go away if it was a devadasi at some point of time it's going to be somebody else some other time carnatic music has become a mono frame of aesthetic in the singular primarily because 
we removed the aesthetic narrative that the Devadasis and the Nadasuram and the Tabal Vidwans had, in, had imbued into the idea of the Carnatic. What we have done is we either erased parts of it or we took parts and then made it something else. So actually, I think Carnatic music is deprived. It's still beautiful. That's a different thing, right? It's deprived of, of shades, of colors, of a multi-directional approach to what does it mean orally to be Carnatic? Or what does it mean orally and visually to have Sadir? I don't know whether even to call it Bharatanatyam or Sadir. I'm actually struggling as I speak to you because I don't know. Uh, because when I say Bharatanatyam, I feel, I feel I'm erasing something. When I say Sadir, then what is this they are dancing today? But the fact is we have created these monoframes more out of sociological conditionings rather than looking at them in aesthetic frameworks and as aesthetic complexities. And therefore, I think it's time we, we dig deep about these things. These are not things to just talk about as arguments between two people or to agree or disagree with me. I think it's as artists, it's important for me to think of these discussions when I sing a Todi Kambuji Begada Kalyani Sahana.